spinning up. Here we are. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Anne. <laughs> Happy Monday. You ready to get us started? Absolutely. Good, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ann Rossley with Baird & Warner. I'm here with my colleague and friend, Kyle Harvey. We are both with Baird & Warner in the Gold Coast office. We sell real estate in downtown Chicago, and we love to talk about real estate. Hi. Happy snowy Monday. Happy, you know, I, I was just watching our credits. that are all sunshine and flowers. <laughs> We're, We're not happy for sunshine and flowers, people. No. Uh, yeah, happy no. Monday. You want to go out and do another one of those intros in the snow today? No. Snow is my least favorite um, weather experience. Biting cold is mine. I'd even take biting cold over snow. Really? Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about positive things. What's going on in the market? We've got stats. We've got um how to buy in a low inventory market which is really timely because guess what this is a low inventory market people absolutely right and then we have for tom rossley pretty properties, <laughs> pretty properties. we like to look at pretty properties we sure do all right so shall we start with statistics yes i've got i have weird statistics this week guys i i just warning you um Give me one second. Names. I have to remove names. I have really? to. Whoopsie. I have to remove names. There we go. And in the process, I lost lost my stats. Here we go. We see them. Okay, good. And now we see something funny. You see the blue. Okay. Now we're good. Woo. So. Uh, Kyle, you know what this is. This is from the front page of our MLS. And I wanted to take a screenshot today to just kind of show you this is the last 21 days. I did it last night. So basically since the first of the year for the near north. And I did uh, the loop, near north, Lincoln Park, Lakeview, and West Town. And it's just a comparison to show you how many new properties have come on the market versus how many have gone under contract, private, which is a lot a of lot. private listings, a lot. and uh, closed. Uh, 1,044 is a good number. It's not as high as we would like to see. Um, and I'll show you here. This is the MRED uh, weekly snapshot. And the blue here is current year and the green is previous year and it goes by weeks. And this is number of listings under contract in the MLS. And you can see that this week, more properties went under contract than this week last year. So that doesn't surprise me. And I'm guessing it doesn't surprise you. Well, you know, and last year, January was so hot, so frantic with buyers. I was out with my buyers every weekend, every, you know, all the time, frantically trying to get them into seeing something because things went under contract so fast. The fact that it's already higher than last year is, is amazing. Right. I know. Okay, this is new listings, and this is what troubles me. Oh, yeah, look at that. We have fewer new listings coming on the market these last two weeks than the previous year. Yeah. So I'm really hoping this turns around because if we have the same number of buyer activity or stronger than last year and this many fewer listings, you're not a kidding that our topic today is critical and important to talk about because there's just nothing to sell the buyers that are looking for properties. This shows inventory. And I drew the line here just to show you that from August, the week of August, active properties 
And you can see we have just like a third of the number less than we had. Is yeah. that how you say it? I don't we know. Have a, we, we I have don't know what the number is. Yeah. I didn't do the math, but whatever. Lots less. Lots less. Way lots less. And it's been this way for the last three weeks. And we're not seeing them coming on the market yet. And here's the thing. Everyone knows that um, that interest rates are going to go up later in the in the next six weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks. And um, so buyers are frantic. Absolutely. <laughs> so here's the Chicago Lakefront neighborhoods. That was previously the MLS. Uh, the month's supply of homes is like nothing. And it's a staggering decline. Uh, I wanted to look at it by price range because you and I do a lot in the luxury market. We do all price ranges, but you know we do a lot in the luxury market. In 2020, we had 16 months worth of inventory. Higher priced homes take longer to sell. Uh, that's not a secret. But we've gone from 16 and a half months down to three months worth of homes that are 1.8 and over. So I mean, I, everything you know, is low right now. All price I, points. Exactly. And I have a house in, and I am willing to talk about this. I have a house in um uh in Bucktown that is um was on the is on the market, was on the market for 3.25 million. And the first week of January, I had so many showings, two offers were under contract with a backup offer. I mean, it's it's just bam. They yeah. people have come out flying and properties are disappearing from the market. Absolutely right. Yeah. But only, but again, well, I think people are being realistic these days about price because they know they're going to get it. So they're willing to put their property on the market at the price where it's going to sell. Yeah. Well, in generally, in general, I think that is right. So anyway, this slide just demonstrates that in all price ranges, all price ranges, low inventory and in the over million dollar where it had been higher, that's low as well. Yeah. I just, I, this astounds me. If you look at where we were 10 years ago, January 22, a single family home in the lakefront neighborhoods, 750. Today it's up to a million 187. That's a 58% increase over 10 years. And, but 10 years ago was a disastrous market. Yeah. This was, but, and so, but it's, it shows you how you can recover in a city that's got its challenges and even from a disastrous market. What's well, great. Yes. And, and let's say um, there is a significantly greater number of families who are raising their kids in the city. Yeah. There are companies that have moved downtown, such as Beam Centauri and Motorola and McDonald's and, you know, uh, those firms. So over the last 10 years, there's been a real trend to living downtown. So, yeah, yeah it's not like New York or L.A., but, you know, very strong. But the yeah. same is true with condominiums. A condominium used to be 284.5, today 395 pretty flat over the last year, but up almost 39% over 10 years. Well, wouldn't you also say that in, in the lakefront neighborhoods, there's been such a delivery of new construction that it isn't the same experience as single family homes, which just don't show up. I mean, you, there isn't that much new construction compared to the new construction for condominiums. In terms of number of units, you're absolutely yes. right. Yeah. And, and that right. explains why, you know, it's the 30, almost 40 percent price increase is not higher because we keep adding to it. That's yeah. Um, we keep adding to the inventory in terms of, you know, total inventory. Right. Absolutely. OK, you mentioned interest rates <clears throat> two weeks ago. This was on our screen. This was what the predictions were. First quarter, interest rates would be an average of 3.3. And by the end of the year, we'd be at 3.7. Well, gang, we had a big increase in interest rates in the last two weeks since we last got together. And Freddie Mac says the 30-year fix, which is this blue line, is an average of 3.56 already. Uh, I have had a client who 
locked in and granted he had a ridiculously wonderful rate, but it was in the twos. And uh, if he has to change to another loan, it's going to be in the threes. Uh, so yeah, this still, is pushing people. Still incredibly low, but the, the just unbelievably low are gone for a while. Um, yeah. Until we get inflation under control. Right, right. So we're really in a jam. So that makes talking about how to buy in a low inventory market and a very important topic today. And I'm working with buyers. We're, in a, you know, just I want to just give you a quick scenario. They're an adorable couple. They bought from me, bought in um, Logan Square, two bedroom. They have a beautiful little girl and now they're ready to move up to a bigger home. So they're looking in the 650-ish range now. And they're looking for either a big condo like a duplex down or a smaller single family home like in Avondale or Logan. So they've been they were out this weekend looking at properties. Well, they went in one property. They're like, okay, this is it. We want to buy. So we wrote an offer immediately. Well, sure enough, within 12 hours, multiple offers due by seven o'clock last night. I don't know where we are on it. Um, they went to an open house yesterday just to keep checking what's available. They went up. The open house was canceled because it had already gone under contract before even the open houses. So and that's just one couple in one situation. But it shows you just how difficult uh, it is right now to find property. Well, this is what we experienced last January. This was la this was last January too, um, more in the suburbs than in the city. Yes, um, but certainly you know just crazy. And so, you and I have some tips for people about how you navigate this. And these don't all work, but these are the only things that might work. <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about first how to find a property in a low inventory market. And then we're going to talk to you about how to win the day in yes. buying that property. So, and why do people do better with brokers helping them? Well, brokers have access to top agent network and the private listing network to find properties before they hit. We also We'll send out letters to our colleagues in the office saying, do you have anything coming up? So even before they hit the private network, we can have intel on properties. Um, so I would say those are a couple of reasons that they should be working with brokers. Yeah. And again, brokers are also going to have all that strategy that we're about to talk about. I mean, it's right. I've noticed a trend of... Um, you know that commercial, the Holiday Inn Express, where the guy's doing surgery and they say, oh, how long have you practiced medicine? I don't practice medicine. I just slept at a Holiday Inn Express and now I'm an expert in everything. Well, yeah. A little bit of that going on, people thinking, I don't need a broker. I can figure this all out myself. And the answer is, OK. But in a market like this, right. it's hard. So, OK. So I. And, you know, it's really interesting. Buyers. I can't tell you enough, get the pre-approval two weeks ago. Um, and you can get a generic approval, one that says up to a certain price point at an interest rate. And uh, well, but yeah, have it in your back pocket. That you and I will do with our buyers, when we submit an offer, we mm -hmm. will speak to the, the mortgage lender and say, um, put it for this amount for this property and they'll, they'll do it. They'll craft another letter, but you need to know one, I can get a pre-approval. I can get that letter in short notice and two, how much you can afford. So, um, and under what terms you're going to want to do it, a conventional loan, a special, you know, 97% loan, um, all cash, all those things you're going to want to know um, up front. So a pre-approval is really important. Absolutely. And, and in really tough times um, like this, if if I you could even go a further step and be 
past just the generic pre-approval into the I'm okay for a loan at, at which point you might think about all cash offers um, with an appraise out with an appraisal um, contingency, not anything else, but just that it's going to appraise for the purchase price. Because right. um, if you know you're going to get the loan, you've already been enough approved. You've got a, a what do they call that? A um, I forget what they call it. And they you put can, it through underwriting and put it through and, underwriting in the first instance. Right. Um, then you can be in the all cash position. All cash does not mean you're going to pay up with all cash. It means you're just not going to make the loan, getting the loan, the seller's problem. So, you know, I can't say enough of getting your financial house in order. Right. Absolutely right. Um, you need to be ready to drop everything to look at a property when it hits the market. And when you're working with a real estate agent, we can even get you in earlier sometimes. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've called and begged to get into properties. Uh, they may say no showings until the weekend, but sometimes if we've worked with that agent before, they will make an exception for us. And that's the benefit of working with an agent who has a good rapport with the other agents. And uh, they know that when I bring a buyer in, it's truly a pre-approved buyer who's ready to go and not wasting their time. But uh, you need to be ready to go. Yeah. I often will say to another agent, I have your buyer. We're coming. Anytime. Yeah. I have your buyer. Right. Um, so to your point, yes, I, I have a lot of people like, I can't go until the weekend. Well, it's gone. Yeah. Um, okay. Sometimes this helps. You buyer, keep your ear to the ground. Tell your friends what you're looking for because they'll hear what their friends are doing and they um, they may hear of somebody else's plans to move. For example, this is such a good one. Um, a friend of mine um, was clearing out her garage in getting ready to um, stage it for, you know, going on the market a couple of weeks ahead. A neighbor came over and said, what, why are you cleaning out your garage? She's like, yeah, we're, we're going to move to Florida, da, 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 da. And the neighbor's like, I have your buyer. Went and got, told a friend, friend came over, they bought the house. The woman didn't even have to, she didn't have to do anything. She didn't even pay a broker because, uh, which we don't, of course, recommend. But <laughs> um, she's, you know, she, they, they got themselves organized and, the neighbor helped the, um, the neighbor knew her friend needed something and got in. Now this isn't going to happen all the time, but tell people so that they can be your eyes and ears too. Absolutely. Right. Right. All right. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just go back and summarize one more time, you know, have your agent, have us, Put it out on the top agent network, put it out on private listing network, what you're looking for. And then um, we can also, if you're very specific about a price point, a neighborhood, if everything is in place except the property, we can even make phone calls or write letters to owners who are not on the market to see if somebody might have what you're looking for. So I always find, though, that people who receive those letters are creeped out. Um, they think it's fake, like they're, like there's some sort of scam. So I get a little nervous. Well, you know what? I'm very specific in saying I'm not looking to list your property. And I explain who the buyers are. Okay, good. And, I, and I've had success with it. Yeah. Okay, right. And it, you're exactly right. There was a day way back when, when scammy agents would just send out this letter. People are looking to buy in your neighborhood. No, no, no. I have a couple. They're pre-approved to this amount. They're looking for a three bedroom or a four bed, whatever, very specific. And, and then I find that that, that can, that can help. Good, 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 good. Cause I remember a number of people telling, asking me whether they got this letter, is it a scam? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. Um, but your point. So brokers help pre-approvals mean that you are ready to go. You've got to behaving behave like you're ready to go, and right. um, and don't hide your plans under a rock. Tell people, All right. right? 
Okay. Well, one more have, thing. Oh, you oh. may need to be a little flexible in exactly what your priorities are. Yes. Because yes. if you really are busting out of your home, you may have to find something that's not exactly the right neighborhood or it might need a little bit of work. Be open to doing work. Kyle and I have resources to help you. Uh, yeah, this is not the market to insist on perfect. Right. It, I mean, it is if you if you don't have to move. Sure, always wait. But if you do have to move, understand you're going to have to do work. You're right. likely to have to do work if you're going to win. Yeah. Okay, how to win. What are the Work with a real estate agent that knows how to help you win. So what are the levers of a winning offer? What do you as a seller's agent want to see in an offer? Well, if I'm the listing agent, I want that contract to be as absolutely clean as possible. You know, a buyer typically has contingencies. They have the attorney approval. They have the inspection. They have the mortgage. You know, I... If I'm the seller, I want it on a closing date. I want it to be free of contingencies. Um, I'm not as freaked out by an attorney review contingency no. or a, an inspection contingency, but but anything else, I'm sort of like, ugh. Right, right. Well, in the mortgage contingency, there are ways to beef it up if, if the buyer really needs to have that. And I've had my lenders talk to the seller's agent um, to really talk about how approved they are and how it's a slam dunk. Um, That's helpful. And, and I've had some people say, you know, it's going to be an up down inspection. We're not going to nickel and dime you over little stuff and we'll do the inspection in two days. So if it's not going to work, you'll be back on the market, you know. So that's another thing that we've done to keep it clean. Yeah. Um, I also, if I have to have a mortgage, um, I'll encourage them to get to have as big a um, an interest rate and as you know as high a um, you know twenty percent down when I know that I'm going to get a three percent down mortgage. But I put in the contract twenty percent down because if it's not going to work, it's not going to work at right three percent or twenty percent. So Right. And what you're saying there, just to clarify for our viewers, is interest rates you just saw on the Freddie Mac, that they're averaging 3.56. The mortgage contingency paragraph in the contract says, I promise that if I can get a loan at X interest rate over 30 years with X percent down. Well, if somebody has 3.5 on their contract today and interest rates are an average 3.56 and rising, how does the seller know that you're going to qualify if rates bump up? So you want to say that up to 4% interest rate with 20% down over 30 years, I can get away. And, and two points. What you're saying is I am not going to make the mortgage terms your problem. I'm going to make right. me getting a mortgage your problem, but not the mortgage terms. Right. Um, which is, believe it or not, helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and again, we talked about uh, all cash doesn't mean you're going to pay all cash. It means you're going to take the risk of the of being able to get a mortgage on you and not put it on the seller. And you can only do this if you've been down the pre-approval to through underwriting and where you know what you're not allowed to do, buy a new car. Um, buy new buy furniture, <laughs> take that alone. I vote. <laughs> drain your finance, drain your, um, your, or add credit, add to your credit history. Um, make yourself look at all risky to an underwriter. If you can do that, well then, you know, all cash may make sense. Right. Don't put a home sale contingency on. If I you're know, that's really contingency. hard. Well, see, here's the thing. Home sale contingencies, that is a that is a belt and suspenders because if you can't sell your house, you're not going to get a mortgage. Right. So, you know, you don't all, sometimes you don't need both the mortgage contingency and the home sale contingency, but sometimes you do. And sometimes it's, 
you know, I understand when you have to do it, but in this market, a home sale contingency is likely to kill you. Right. And finally, be flexible about the closing date and time. If you can meet the seller's needs, that'll put you all that much closer to getting your contract chosen. So one of the things that I have found, um, you know, in a market of low inventory, prices rise because, you know, supply and demand, that's how economy, uh, economics works. Right. Um, I have, and I'm sure Anne has, if you put together the other terms, all cash, very flexible closing date, you know, as few contingencies as possible, you can often pay less and be the more attractive offer. Right. Because they're like, this is the one that's going to close. I'm willing to trade some money for certainty. Right. And we're not talking 10% of the purchase price, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, the more your agent knows how to help work the system, build a rapport with the seller's agent, uh, all of that helps. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, one more thing that um, can they see temp on the, um, on uh, the internet? No. no. Okay, well, there, is a, there is a status called temp, t temporarily off the market. And temporarily off the market usually means something has gone wrong in the house or in the property. Um, there was a leak upstairs. Um, there's a, uh, so we've decided to paint because we right. haven't sold. Um, the person wants to come home for a few weeks. Temps are actually gold mines because you don't have competition. Right. If, if there's something that's gone temporarily off the market, I can call the broker. Um, there's a really cute condo. My, my buyer isn't ready to buy. Um, but went temporarily off the market because there was a flood upstairs and there's X, Y, and Z problem. But, oh boy, if we were ready to buy, we would get that one, not make them fix it. We take care of the fixing it, get it a lower price, bam. Because no one would know that it is still on the market. It's just temporarily off the market. So, right. so that's a good way to get in. So let me just finalize our uh, conversation by saying this. If you think you want to buy in the next six months, it is not too early to get in touch with us now to get your ducks in a row. Start going to open houses, seeing things, getting your pre-approval, making sure you're good to go. Um, and I would say, let's get on it. We're going to find that property for you. Kyle and I don't stop until we, don't. we get her done. Get her done. Pretty, pretty property. Okay, here we go. I'm hitting the share share screen. Hold on. I'm not going to share. Oh, here we go. Share. Tell me if you can see this. Oh, you can. Look at that. So I've got. I decided because I'm. I'm getting. I'm about to tell you. Uh, some, hopefully, going to tell you about a new listing with outdoor space, lots of bedrooms, beautiful luxury. So I started looking at the competition. And decided to show you these pretty properties. Okay. Okay. So this is 333 West Hubbard, unit um, 1006. And it's a, it's a top floor, as you can tell in this unit. But wait till you see some of the outdoor space. This is oh, probably wow. outdoor space. I mean. What's the, what is the, what are the details on this property? This is a three bedroom, four bath. 2.9 million dollars okay now it's got it's got the hoa is 5200 a month and the taxes are a whopping um well this is 2019 taxes 40 almost forty seven thousand dollars. wow a year but it look i mean okay Woo! I there but look at that <laughs> look how well that was staged so it's it's a beautiful sort of loft um yeah. Uh, condo, lots of space, fireplace that goes through to the other side, pool room for those who are so inclined. I mean, outdoor space everywhere. Wouldn't you love this to be your bedroom with a little patio outside for your cup yeah, of coffee in the morning? 
Then the next one is 1209 North Astor, which okay. is just the prettiest building. My grandmother lived there, so I love this building. This is the penthouse, full floor penthouse. It's on the market for $3.1 million. Okay. It, it too is three bedrooms, four and a half baths. And it's monthly taxes, because it's a co-op, everybody. It's monthly assessments and taxes are $7,000. So pretty, pretty. Okay. Okay. Hi. This is your Hi. entry wall. Beautiful. Big living room. Oh, this is the other living room, probably. It's now a beautiful panel den. Kitchen, enormous kitchen. I see a peak of the lake there too. Yes, you'll see more lake. The, um, this building, if you're angled right, you get around the other um, buildings behind, uh, between it and Lakeshore Drive and you get some lake. Oh. Look at how pretty this is. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this, wow. This face is west. So lots of sun in the afternoon. And that's from your, di you know, your dining rooms and kitchen. Look at how pretty that is. So those are pretty properties, people. If you're looking for expensive and glorious, stop, share. Beautiful properties. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So this week we were hitting it hard on how to win when buying a property. Next week, we're going to talk about how to win when selling a property in a low inventory market. Right. That's not the really plan. Win. And not get in your own way. <laughs> right. Exactly. Everybody, thank you for watching. If you have questions, please let us know. We love addressing those. And we will see you next week on Monday Morning Coffee with Kyle and Ann.